of pre-K. I hope you're enjoying your indoor time with your family. Today, I brought out one of my favorite books called The Bravest of All Heroes. It's a really old book made back in the 1970s. So probably when your moms and dads were kids, In a fire station in a corner of the city lived two big hook and ladder trucks, an ambulance with a resuscitator, a machine that blew great puffs of foam onto fires to put them out, eight strong young firefighters, and Jonathan. Long ago when he was young, Jonathan was the best firefighter in the city. He and engine number one put out the warehouse fire of 1932 and the Wilson School fire of 1935. At the Great Hotel fire of 1939, Jonathan rescued 132 people and was given a gold star that said the bravest of all. Engine number one was parked in the back of the station now. It was an old fire engine. Its pump wheezed, its paint was chipped, and tarnished brass bell squeaked, and it sung back and forth. Sometimes the neighborhood children came to climb and play on engine number one. Jonathan told them stories then about how the warehouse wall had fallen on the engine and how he had saved the children at Wilson School. Haven't seen the fire yet, old number one couldn't put out, he told them. And he told them this proudly. And sometimes if they asked, he told the children the story of the gold star in his helmet that said, the bravest of all. But the young firefighters said Jonathan was too old and they wouldn't let him work anymore. And they said engine number one was out of date. Well, we're all getting older. That's true. One night, a fire started downtown and it raced through an office building and chewed into the store beside it. The sky glowed fierce and red as the flames leaped high. Whoa! Through the streets of the city, a hundred sirens sounded. Stay here, old timer, called the young firefighters to Jonathan, and watch the shop. And off raced the hook and ladders, off raced the foam machine, and off raced the ambulance. Whoa! The sirens faded away. Jonathan sighed and wandered out behind the firehouse where engine number one was parked. Far up in the sky, a few stars twinkled down on them. The night was dark and very quiet. Suddenly, the alarm bell sounded again. Someone else was in trouble. Jonathan rushed into the station. The new trucks were gone. The ambulance was gone. And the, mach and the foam machine was gone. Mm, I wonder what Jonathan's gonna do. Jonathan hurried back, pulling on his fireman's coat. We'll have to go, old timer, he called. We're the only ones left. Engine number one coughed chuck, 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 and started up. Clang, clang, squeak, clang, clang, squeak. The old bell sounded. Hurry, old engine, hurry, old engine. The wheels seemed to rumble as they started rolling through the dark streets. Help somebody, help somebody. 
they squealed as engine number one rounded the corner. Here we come, squeak. Here we come, squeak. He called the bell. All right, we're going to go to the rescue. There was smoke rising from a house just ahead. A frightened family stood on the curb. The fire's in the basement, shouted the father. It's spreading through the house, sobbed the mother. Engine number one and Mr. Jonathan, cheered the little boy. There's never been a fire they couldn't put out. Engine number one started to pump. It groaned and wheezed and creaked. Then a stream of water shot out through the hose. Keep it coming, partner, called Jonathan, and he disappeared into the basement. Inside, the fire roared and crackled and leaped at him. It spat hot soot on his face. Never seen the fire yet, old number one couldn't put out, Jonathan told the blazing room, and you're not going to be the first. He turned the hose on the flames, and they curled back. A hundred red, snaky tongues licked at everything around him. They jumped at him from under the wash tubs, from behind the furnace, from the stairs. Jonathan could hardly see. He could hardly breathe the hot air. He was getting so tired that his legs didn't want to move. Still, he tightened his grip on the hose and kept forcing the fire back. He was working so hard to get the fire out. It's hard to do with an old engine. Oh, let's see what happens. Outside, a small crowd watched and waited. They were afraid. Jonathan couldn't do it. The more the old trunk puffed, the more it creaked and wheezed. It couldn't go on much longer. Suddenly, engine number one shuddered inside and stopped. Everything was still. Nobody moved. The smoke drifted away, and the fire was out. They did it. Wearily but happily, Jonathan drove engine number one back to the station. It really wasn't a big fire, he has said as he climbed down and took off his coat. But, he added, it might have been. Not a big fire, he said, pulling off his boots. But if we hadn't gone, it might have been. The next morning, the big new trucks cruised home. They had put out the biggest fire that the city had ever seen. They rolled proudly into the station, and a tired young fireman hopped down. Taking it easy there, eh, old timer? They asked Jonathan. Did you wash the shop? They laughed. Yes, said Jonathan. Yes, we did. Just then, a small voice piped up. Where's Mr. Jonathan? asked the little boy. All the firefighters watched him as he walked to Jonathan. You dropped this at our house last night when you were putting out the fire. My mother said you would want it. In Jonathan's wrinkled brown hand, he placed a star. The young firemen gathered around to look. What does it say? asked the youngest and strongest with some new respect in his voice. They looked down at the star in the old timer's hand, blackened with soot and tarnished from the heat. The gold still glimmered through and said, the bravest of firefighters. The end. All right. Thanks for joining me for story time today. Bye.